Today on part three of my Making Your Business Legal series, we're gonna talk about the magic of the S-Corp election and how it can save your small business a lot of money. So out of the gate, I wanna say that an S-Corp is not an entity type it's a federal tax election, but it has really big implications. So most small businesses that are corporations elect S-Corp status because if they don't, their default is gonna be that they're a C-Corp, which means they're taxed twice, which nobody wants, but if you're gonna be a huge company, that's what you gotta do. So there are reasons to do a C-Corp, but most small corporations are S-Corps. Now, for limited liability companies, you're not taxed twice. It's a flow through entity. So the taxation goes to you as an individual. So it may not be as obvious to most people, including myself back in the day, that you need to file an S-Corp election if you are a limited liability company. In fact, in my first year of owning my own law firm uh, in 2009, I paid $10,000 more to the government in self-employment taxes that I would not have had to pay had I known about the, the true magic of the S-Corp election. So we're gonna dive into that a little bit more and just kind of give some examples and talk about why you would wanna do that. So normally in an LLC, if you do not have an S-Corp election, the default status is that you have to pay 15.3% approximately of self-employment tax to the federal government on every dollar that you pay yourself. All of the money that you make in an LLC is subject to this 15.3% self-employment tax up to $137,700 uh, changes every year. That's what it is for 2020. So to illustrate how this works in a standard LLC, let's say at the end of the year, there's $100,000 that you've paid yourself, whether it was all in one lump at the end of the year or whether it was in you know, equal installments throughout the year. The bottom line, you paid yourself $100,000 What's your tax picture look like? The answer is, if you are a default LLC and you have not elected S-Corp status, you're gonna have to pay an extra $15,300 in self-employment tax. So the total you owe is now $115,300. Oh, I'm sorry, you didn't put back another $15,300 to pay the IRS? Well, you're now in trouble, friend. This is why uh, you gotta learn about the magic of the S-Corp election on random videos on Facebook and YouTube. Okay, so what should you do? Okay, let's talk about the S-Corp election status. On the other hand, if you elect S-Corp status, it's a different picture. Instead of uh, having to pay this 15.3% self-employment tax on your entire income up to $137,000, now you divide your income into two groups, okay? Group number one is a reasonable salary. We'll come back to what that means here in just a second. And group number two of your income is uh, distributions, if you are in an LLC, and dividends if you're in a corporation. Profit, okay? So you will pay, don't worry, the IRS is still going to get their money from you, it turns out, okay? So you're just mitigating how much you're paying the IRS, you're still gonna pay it. But you're gonna pay 15.3% self-employment tax on the portion that is your reasonable salary. On the portion that is over and above your reasonable salary, that's either distributions or dividends, profits uh, for, for your ownership, you're not going to pay the additional 15.3% self-employment tax, which ends up being a substantial savings. You still have to pay your income tax at your highest marginal bracket, but you know, that's you knew that was gonna be the deal, right? Life, and, life death, and taxes, or just death and taxes. <laughs> wow, what an optimist. So what is a reasonable salary? Basically, it's a reason to hire an accountant. No, seriously, it, it is um, because accountants are gonna be able to tell you what can you get away with for a reasonable salary, right? Because, you know, everyone has different risk tolerance, right? But uh, obviously, what you wanna do is you wanna, you wanna find out where's the line and you wanna, you know, get as much benefit as you can get without going over the line, right? So accountants are gonna be able to trace that line for you and, and give you a better idea of kind of what you can get away with and, and, and what uh, has typically been allowed by the IRS. 
So once you have determined your reasonable salary or approximately what your reasonable salary is going to be, then go ahead and do the math to figure out how much money you can save with an S-Corp election. It's pretty easy. You just need to plug in a, a few numbers into a formula. So let's walk through an example. Let's say your company has $120,000 a year that's available to pay your salary and any taxes that are from your salary. And let's say that the reasonable salary for you and in your industry and in your situation is $50,000, just to keep it easy. In that instance, if you elect S-Corp status, then you're going to pay 15.3% uh, of self-employment tax on the $50,000. That comes out to $7,650 that you would pay in self-employment tax on that $50,000 of reasonable income. And if you did the S-Corp election, you are now going to walk away with $62,350 that is now not subject to that extra 15.3% tax. That comes out to about a $9,500 savings, just based on filing a form and making a tax election. If you make more money than that, uh, then you're gonna save even more, especially if the reasonable salary is lower in your industry. So consult with your accountants, consult with your attorneys, talk to some people, uh, and run the numbers and see exactly how much you could save. S-Corps are your friend, and generally they are the move if you are a small business, the S-Corp tax election. Okay, have a good one. We'll see you next time.